Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in, being intentional about getting in uh, tonight. Let's see uh, who's in the room uh, with us. Uh, greetings, Wisconsin and Nevada. I see you on. Florida, I see you on. Oklahoma, thank you so much for joining me. Texas, I see you uh, in the room. Let's see who else is on. Just say hello and your state. Let's just see. Hello and your state. Let's see who's on. Kentucky, hello, hello. I'm looking forward to being there. Charlotte, hey, Laverta. Arizona, uh, thank you uh, for being on with us tonight. Alaska, come on now. Alaska, West Palm Beach, thank you so much. Humble, Texas, thank you uh, so much, all of you that have been intentional. I hope that you shared uh, with everyone that uh, <laughs> that uh, we are live uh, tonight. And um, I want you to think about uh, what your prayer requests are. North Carolina, hello, hello, hello. Uh, thank you uh, so much, all of you that are getting on. Uh, Louisville, Texas, hello, hello all of you that are joining us tonight. I'm just giving us time uh, to get in the room. Uh, so we start uh, together. Hello, Marilyn, I'm looking forward to being there. Uh, and sometime, I think late summer or whenever that is that I'm scheduled to be there. Thank you, El Paso, thank you uh, for being in the room. Uh, I'm so thankful for all of you that are intentional about following me on all of my social media platforms. If you're not following me on Instagram or uh, uh, YouTube, if you haven't subscribed uh, to my YouTube channel, you really need to do that. Uh, and of course here on Facebook, I have two pages. Uh, it might be more difficult to get on my personal page than it is my public page, BJ Austin International Ministries. And um, so, yeah. And so uh, just follow me, follow me, follow me. Tell other people to follow me. Be an ambassador for what I do. Uh, yes, I can see you see Facebook comments. And so uh, thank you, Beaumont. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm grateful. Uh, a lot has happened just in such a short, short uh, period of time. And it is really I've been listening to the Lord speak to me about recent events uh, that had to do with directives that he gave me. And uh, I see the word of the Lord. I begin to hear uh, the word of the Lord in it. And I had not really planned uh, to be on tonight. New Mexico, welcome, welcome. I had not really planned to be on tonight, but I could hear uh, the word of the Lord just concerning um, just the, the time uh, that we are living in. Virgin Islands, I would so love to uh, be there and come and do uh, an encounter, a couple of encounter days. I really feel like the encounter tour is not really about selling books. I will sell books, but it is more about releasing, uh, joining together with the ecclesia that is in the region and all of us with a collective anointing, activating uh, the territory, the region into the next level, uh, really awakening uh, a new dimension uh, of the anointing. And so this is the ultimate purpose of going from region to region to region. It's taxing. Uh, these are all free events. And uh, if you're in the region, if you're close, you can come and join. Greetings, Uganda. And uh, you can come and join and be a part of those incredible nights. We don't just come in cold. We spend time in prayer. We spend time fasting. We spend time seeking the face of the Lord so that we have uh, an accurate word for the territory. So we're coming in, uh, joining with the Ecclesia, activating uh, the body of believers that's there, releasing an incredible anointing um, in the region that will thrust the region forward. That is the intent. And so wherever we are, I think my next place that I'll be is uh, Beaufort. Yeah, there it is. It's we're going to be in Beaufort, South Carolina. That's where we're going to be. If you are wherever you are, if you're close to Savannah, Georgia, if you are close wherever you are that's close to any of these cities, I really encourage you 
to register and meet me and my team there. It's, it's just going to be incredible. I'm grateful for uh, the, the Buford team that has been doing incredible work and prayer preparing for our coming, and uh, they have welcomed us into the territory. They are preparing. They are uh, they are just amazing, and so I just want to publicly thank all of these teams from uh, region to region that prepares for us, uh, that Charleston, all of you that uh, prepare for us and welcome us in such incredible ways. Thank you uh, so much. And so I want to just share some things. Now, for those of you that don't know, I have recently made a transition. Um, there is an assignment uh, for me uh, in Texas, and I have made, in the last eight days, I have transitioned from Wisconsin into Texas, and uh, I am grateful uh, for what uh, God is doing, and uh, I, I'm grateful for what I continue to do uh, in Wisconsin. I have an incredible uh, team of leaders in place there that uh, God has poured into them. I have poured into them. They have dedicated and submitted themselves to the will and the purpose of God. And uh, they are moving uh, that assignment uh, forward. And uh, I am apostling over that, that uh, work. And uh, I'm here uh, in Texas, and um, I am listening uh, for the assignment of heaven uh, for me here. And uh, I really feel like it is. I'm, I'm not here because I'm flighty. I'm not here because I didn't know any place else to go. I'm here because God directed me. And so this is really my segue uh, into uh, what I want to say tonight. I want to pray for as many of you as I can. I want to prophesy over uh, as many of you as I can. So this is a time uh, that uh, I want you to encourage people uh, to, to get on, to get in. Uh, I'm also grateful for uh, I didn't come uh, to Texas alone. Uh, there, there are those that have uh, made this transition uh, with me. And uh, because when you're whatever it is God has called you to do, you can't do it alone. You need people that pray for you, that encourage you, that strengthen you and um, that hear the word of the Lord and that and they trust the anointing uh, that you carry. So incredible people came along with me. I want to honor our moderator, uh, our, my assistant uh, tonight. She helps me, her and Laverta. They uh, help me in incredible ways with all of the technical stuff. I just really like to sit down and do this. And so I'm grateful for them. They helped me in just amazing ways, amazing, amazing, amazing ways. And so I want to talk about this. I want to talk about um, directives. I want to talk about uh, when uh, you are in a transition. And that is the, uh, that's going to be the prevailing anointing in the room tonight. Yes, we might touch on healing. The Lord might take us there. But I really felt like God wanted me to talk to us about transitions. Um, ha me having made a transition lately into, into Texas and still getting settled here. Um, I've just been here eight days and uh, still getting settled. And um, just knowing what that, what that means and what it took to be able to do that. And so we're in a season in time. Here's the first thing I want to say to us. We are in a season and time that we must hear the directive of heaven in a way that orders our steps forward. We must hear the direction of heaven and know how he is ordering our steps forward. See, God is never taking us in reverse. He's moving us forward. What has the Lord said to you? What movement, what movement has God spoken to you about? And when I talk about movement, I'm not always talking about uh, what I did moving into an entire different region. That's not what I'm talking about. Sometimes God is having you move in relationships. God is having you move in other ways. What is the Lord speaking to you about? Movement. 
And so as we got ready to uh, be here, um, it became intense. It, there was so much, uh, it was intense because you start from having a directive to mounting up in, the, in a way that you begin that preparatory uh, stage. So there's a way of preparation that God pulls us into and that requires something. That requires something, that preparation. How do you prepare? How do you prepare for the movement that God is directing you into? What is that? And if you don't sit and gain revelation, your movement will either uh, be chaotic if it happens at all. It will be chaotic if it happens at all. So the Lord spoke to me and he said, you need to pass over by Passover. So that said to me that I needed to be in place by Passover. Passover is April 20th, I believe it is, April 20th through the 29th, right in that window of time. And I knew that, I, I, I knew that. And so as I started preparing, what I recognized was the, the distractions that began to happen. I got I, 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 I got sick. I had an upper respiratory something going on and it kept going and coming and going and coming and going and coming. And I found that I was very lethargic and didn't really feel like uh, pressing and pressing and pressing. And so I, I could watch time moving and uh, Passover was, was getting nearer and nearer. And I was grateful that I was able to press into that place of breakthrough. See, sometimes when God is ordering your steps, you have to look at the distractions that are around you. What is it that's manifesting around you that is designed to keep you from the movement that God has purposed for you? If you don't recognize that, then what's going to happen is you are subject to delay. You are subject to delay. So the so trans, transition is it can can be chaotic when there's no plan, when there's no prep, uh, preparation. So one of the first things I want to say to us is in your movement you must listen for heaven's directive. If your movement is not marked by revelation or heaven's directive, then where is that directive coming from? Where is that directive coming from? So we must gain heaven's revelation. This is a season in time that is I'm watching the movement in the body of Christ. I felt like I heard the Lord begin to say, my people are going to have to understand what it is to pull aside and sit in my presence and gain my directive. Allow me to give them revelation. Allow that me to show them where and how I want them to move. We must tune our ears to heaven. Our directives must come from him and not from ourselves. We can't afford to do something just because it's a good idea. The other thing that's key for us is old strategies, old ways of movement. This is key for us, gaining revelation so that he orders our steps you're going to have some pushback because while God is ordering you forward, there's a real enemy that's trying to get you to be stationary or get you to back up. What I knew for me is that if I had not passed over by Passover, I knew by the spirit of God that I would be hit with the spirit of delay and I would not leave the territory until um, head of the year. I knew that. I knew that my movement was timed. I knew that uh, getting in place by Passover was key. I wanna to say to you, there is a way of movement that God has for you 
There are some situations that you need to move out of. There are some relationships that you need to look back at and say, this is not pushing me into the presence of God. How do, what do I need to do here? If you, if you, if you are stagnant, if you are stagnant and you don't, you, and, 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 and I keep hearing this word, uh, lethargic, lethargy, lethargy. You have to recognize what is coming against you. What is coming against you? So right here, Father, I pray for everyone in this room that you have given them a mandate, you have given them a directive, and they feel like they, they don't know how to move forward. They, they have been hit by the spirit of lethargy. I break the assignment that has come against them that's designed to hold them into an old place. They are not expanding. They're not breaking out on the right or on the left. They're not not advancing forward and your assignment for them is forward, but yet there seems to be a dark assignment that has come upon them. I break assignments of fear, fear of failure, fear of making a mistake. I take authority over that. Even that voice that comes to say, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if it's not God? What if you fail? What if you don't make it? What if, what if, what if they don't receive you? I, I command the voice of what if to be silent in your life. And I decree that this is a season and time that you clearly hear the mandate of heaven and that the courage of the Lord is rising in you in a new way and you will move forward with him. You will move forward with him. Directive. What is heaven saying? I speak to your ear gates and I decree that your ears are open to hear the directive of heaven. I speak to your eyes and even your discernment. I decree that this is a season and time that you are discerning uh, the presence of the Lord and the mandate of heaven. I speak this over you. Some of you, you have ministries that you become stagnant and you're stuck and it's stale and it's old. I speak to that now and I decree that there's a courage and a boldness coming into you and you will begin to rise up and you will move forward with him. Mm. You will move forward with him. God has not changed his mind about you. God has not changed his mind concerning what he purposed that you would do. God has not changed his mind. And I decree now that you will allow yesterday, the door of yesterday to close. I command that door of failure, the, 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 the taunting of past failures. I command that to close now in the name of Jesus. And I decree that you see the door ahead, that door that he has for you. And you are rising up with boldness and courage and you're moving forward. I speak that over you. So we need a directive. We need directions. He tells us the overall and then there are directions that he gives us in movement. What are your directions? Your directions are the how of your movement. Directions are the how of your movement. How am I to do this? See, notice everything that I'm talking to you about is it's, it's, it's from a place of dependency on him. It's from a place of dependency on him. We must depend on him. Not on our own mind, not on our own creativity. Not on what I just thought, well, this is what they were doing. You've got to get into that place where you are hearing God and you are willing to obey him. You may not see all the details. I don't see all the details. I didn't see all the details before my last box went on the trailer but I know the voice of God when he speaks. And I knew that this is how God was ordering my steps forward. So we need a director. We need to be tuned to the frequency of heaven. We need direction. What are the details? I gave you a detail for me. I knew I had to pass over. I knew I had to get repositioned. I had to transition by Passover. 
I knew that I had to get out of one territory in what in the way that I had been there, and I had to get into a new place. I had to get into a new place. And for me, that meant a lot. That meant pulling a team together. That meant poor recognizing those around me that could pick up parts of the assignment and keep moving it forward. I want to say to you, wherever you are plugged into, this is this is the work of the apostolic that we build you and we strengthen you and we disciple you and we equip you and we train you, not for you to just do nothing. It is for you to pick up a segment of vision and begin to move forward. See, when you join a place, you join a vision. You don't join a building, you join a vision. And God gives you the giftedness that you need to move in that vision. And in moving in that vision, you will see layers of God's plan for your life beginning to unfold. Mm. We need direction. Here's another thing you need in movement. You need discipline. You need discipline. You have to discipline yourself in the place of preparation where you start making the plans. You start doing what it takes, whether that's reading more books, whether that's spending more time in prayer, whether whatever that is. You, when God gives you directives and he gives you direction, you need the detail so you know exactly what you need to do. Discipline. Discipline is an enemy of movement because the lack of discipline will keep you stuck. This is how we become stagnant. The lack of discipline is the enemy of movement. Hear me say that to you. You don't discipline yourself. One day becomes like another day, like another day, and like another day, and like another day. We must hear the voice of God. We must discipline ourselves. What will it take for me to accomplish this? You gain heaven's strategies. What will it take for me to accomplish this? What do I need to do? And here's what I will tell you. We keep putting off things. Well, I'm, I'm going to work on my gift. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing it. I'm going to start 2025 going to be my, my, my year. No, 2024 is the year it all changes. 2024 is the year it all changes. If he has told you that you, he wants you to begin to teach, find if you have to find a child, find somebody that you start teaching. Read your Bible. Read one verse a day and find somebody you can share that verse with. You don't have to be standing on a platform in the front of the church. But the more you build yourself up, the church that you're connected to, the ministry that you're connected to, you become an asset and not a liability. You become a dispenser and not just a consumer. We have too many consumer believers. 2024, the year it all changes. If he, if he said that you are a psalmist, start singing. What you waiting for? Start singing. Look for opportunities to sing. Take those opportunities. If he said you, you have a prophetic gift and we all should prophesy, start listening and believing God for a prophetic word. Lord, give me a prophetic word for somebody in my family. Let me hear something from my coworker. Let me hear something. We've got to start executing. See, now what you're experiencing from me, this is the apostolic grace that stirs us up and provokes us to movement. You were never called to be sedentary. You are never called to be sedentary, just sitting like you're at a tennis match, looking from one side to another, watching everybody move, but there's no movement in you. Come on, it's a time of movement. So discipline, discipline yourself. You know, let the spirit of God help you to overcome the weaknesses and the inconsistencies that are in your life. What are the inconsistencies in your life? What keeps you like you're on a seesaw, up, down, up, down, in, out? What is that? And deal with that. Find some strong leaders connected in where you're connected in and tell them, listen, I'm up, down, up, down, up, down. 
listen, I need some prayer. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. And find people that can help you. I didn't arrive here just because I knew what to do. Somebody had to teach me. Somebody had to encourage me. Somebody had to strengthen me. Somebody had to correct me. Somebody had to disciple me. And I thank God that I did not abort the process. I did not abort the process. I rebuke the spirit of passivity, wrong cycles, demonic cycles up and down and in and out, saved today and not and 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 back in the in the world the next day. I break the power of that thing in the name of Jesus. And I decree that this is your season of, of consistency, 2024, the year that it all changes. God is doing something in the body of Christ. We are seeing measures of separation that are taking place. God is exposing inconsistencies in the body. He's dealing with leaders that have preached one thing and lived another. He's dealing with those inconsistencies. And we are in a season and time that God says, I have, I have fresh voices. There's a fresh wind of the spirit of God that is being released around the globe. And God says, there are those that have been in that hidden place with me that I I am revealing them in this season and in this time, but they have not bowed at the altar of man. They have not bowed at the altar of their own selfishness, but they have submitted themselves according to Romans 12, 1 and 2. They have submitted their bodies. They have submitted their lives. And he said, and this is the season and time that I'm revealing them. They have become the sacrifice. And I am revealing them in this hour. I am revealing those that will hear me in the middle of the night and will get up and begin to call on my name. They won't wait for those that wear the title of intercessor uh, to do the praying, but they will recognize that we are all called to the place of intercession. We're all called to the place of disciplining ourselves in prayer so that we move our cities forward, so that we see a, a breakthrough coming in our families. God wants revival in families. God wants revival in our families. Those of you that say, well, I'm called to be a revivalist, let it begin in your family. Let it begin in your family. 2024, the year it all changes. You've been the other long enough. It's time for the new you to emerge. Come on, somebody. Mm. Discipline. Discipline. Paul says, I don't want, he said, listen, so that I don't become a castaway. He said, well, after I have preached to others, I don't want to be disqualified. He said, so what I do, I keep under my body. He said, I keep under my body. In other words, he was saying, I fast and I pray and I seek. He said, I keep under my body. I believe out of, out of seven days, you ought to fast at least one. I believe you ought to get up early. And I believe that you are, your day should be filled with prayer. Your day should be filled with prayer. If you eat at three, that's fine. If you eat at six, that's fine. If you fast from, from six in the morning till six at night, fine. Let the Lord show you how to do this. But eating seven days a week, 365 days a year, and in leap year is 366, you will never walk in the measure of power that God purposed for you. Somebody better hear me say it. Mm. It's the season that we need to discipline ourselves. What is he saying to you? What is the directive of heaven for you? This is a season that is about directives. Listening to heaven. Listening to heaven's directive being led by the spirit of the living God that's on the inside of us. Transition. I didn't just transform and just arrive in Texas. There was a lot of work. There was a lot of work. I had to press. We had to press when we didn't feel like it. We had to press when we didn't feel like it. We had to look at what needs to make the journey and what does not. 
See, in seasons of transition, you have to look at, you can't pack up everything and take everything. Some stuff had to be laid aside. Some stuff was for your last season and it cannot come into your new season with you. And I'm going to tell you, there's some things that you're going to leave behind that you like. When I came to Christ as a new believer, I didn't hate it, all the sin that was in my life. Some of the sin in my life, I liked it. But I was willing to lay it aside. In this transition, I had to leave some stuff. I had to let it go. I packed up stuff and I gave it away. I prayed over it and I gave it away. I prayed over other things, gave it away. Those that were that 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 shifted with me in that first wave, they looked through their things, they saw what they needed to take and what they didn't, they liked it, they gave it away. See, in transition, you cannot take everything. You're going to have to let the Lord show you what you need to leave behind. This is a season of the anointed goodbye. This is the season of the anointed goodbye. What do you need to say goodbye to? What do you need to say goodbye to? Listen to his directive. What do you need to say goodbye to? When you get to your place, there's an unpacking that you're going to have to do. Even with the things that came with you, the boxes just don't unpack themselves. There's work that you need to do to get positioned in the place that God has assigned for you. What do you need to do? There's a, there's a whole preach in unpacking for your future unpacking for your future, getting things in place, getting rid of the chaos of movement, getting rid of the residue. Movement isn't easy. Getting rid of all of that and then finding some stuff that should have been left behind that's still in your box and saying, you know what? Mm -mm. I wasn't supposed to bring this. I'm getting rid of this. I'm getting rid of this. This is about transition, following him. Here's a scripture I want to give us in the midst of all of this. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. We need heaven's directive. They had to be prepared to move when it was daytime, and they had to be prepared to move when it was night. If they didn't move at night, why would he give them a pillar of cloud, a pillar of fire? They had to be paying attention. Someone was assigned to the watch. And when the trumpet sounded, they knew it was time to get up, pack it up, and let's go. It was none of that, I'll catch up. And there were some that lagged behind. There were some that lagged behind, and those are the ones that the Amalekites attacked. They were lagging behind. They didn't keep up. Let me tell you something. When God assigns movement, you have to see the pace of heaven, the P-A-C-E of heaven. How is heaven moving? And move with heaven. Move with heaven. God will put you with a progressive leader and you will see that leader mounting up in a fresh way and you watch it like you're looking at a tennis match. And all the while they're moving. Let the Lord set your pace. Let the Lord set your pace. Whatever your purpose to do. I just did six weeks of equipped and it was powerful. 
it was an incredible time. Understanding that we're all purposed. We're all purposed. If you're not gonna start doing what God purposed today, when will you do it? When will you do it? I'm telling you, there are some of you that the Lord has spoken to you about certain ways of movement in your life and in ministry. And you need to pass over by Passover. I prophesy to you that if you fail to pass over by Passover, this is the time that the Lord set for you in your movement, you're going to have to contend with the spirit of delay. Passover. What is it going to take for this transition to be complete in your life? What do you need to do? What do you need to do? How do you need to pivot? Pivot is a word for this season. Pivot is a word for this season. Pivot is not a full on turn. It's a, it's a slight shift. How do you need to shift in your life? So we need directives. We need direction. We need discipline. We need discernment. We need to discern the voice in the presence of God. Our nation is at a crossroad. Our nation, the nations of the earth are in a critical place. The nations of the earth need the ecclesia to arrive. The nations of the earth, God has a purpose for every nation. There's a reason for every nation. There's a God reason for every single nation on this planet. Hmm. There's a reason. The ecclesia must arise committed to nothing more than they're committed to the kingdom. Not being committed to anything more than they're committed to the kingdom. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Discernment. Discerning God's voice. Discerning his plan. Discerning enemies that look like friends, frenemies. Discerning the reappearance of old assignments. Discerning. We must be discerning. And I pray for everyone in the room right now. I activate the gift of discernment in you. And I decree that you, uh, I speak a sensitivity over you. That you will be sensitive to the voice of God. You will be sensitive to the direction of heaven, that you will recognize heaven and you will recognize the, the, when the enemy is trying to put a plan in front of you. You will discern between good and evil, right and wrong, holy and profane. You will discern. I activate the gift of discernment on the inside of you. And I break that out, that, that word that you said, it's one of you in here, you have said multiple times, I'm not discerning like that. I don't have discernment like that. I pull those words out of your atmosphere and I declare crop failure over every one of those words. And I decree that this is a season that the gift of discernment, the spirit of discernment breaks forth in you in a new way. And you will hear not just the shout of heaven, but you will hear the whisper of heaven. You will recognize snares and attacks of the enemy before you fall into it. I speak that over you in the name of Jesus. Movement always has a destination. Movement always has a destination. God never isolates us. He connects us to a people. He connects us to vision. Hmm. We're not just wandering, unpacking, 
Sometimes you can't see the place that you're in is, is the place that you're called to because you got too much, you got too many boxes, you got too much garbage, you got too much stuff in the way. You can't even see around you. You're gonna have to unpack some stuff, you're gonna have to throw some stuff out. You're gonna have to get rid of some things, old mindsets, old perceptions, old ways of doing things. You're gonna have to get rid of some stuff. You're gonna have to get rid of it. Get rid of it. This is a season of movement. When he took Israel out of Egypt, they had a destination. He said, I'm taking you from here and I'm taking you to a land that I promised you. I'm taking you, you're gonna to begin to possess Canaan. When he told Abraham, Abram, when he told him, leave your family, leave everything, leave, get up from here and go. You're going to a destination that I will show you. When you get there, I will tell you that you are there. There's always a destination. Stop that. God won't let me connect to anybody. That's a, that, that's a, de that's a deception from the enemy. We were created for relationship with God and with people. Church hurt, get rid of that banner. You wearing it like a merit badge. It's time to be healed and time to be restored. That incident happened five, 10, 15 years ago and you're still carrying the weight of that on your back. I speak healing and restoration over every individual that has struggled with some form of church hurt. I pray for those that you were wounded by leaders. You were wounded by people that you trusted. You were wounded by people in your, in your family, family, especially in family churches. You got trampled in the family church. I speak healing and restoration over you now. I pray for pastors that have been wounded by the sheep that they led. I speak healing over pastors that have been betrayed, that have been misused, that have been mistreated, that have been dishonored by people that said they love them. I speak healing over you now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing over you now in the name of Jesus. Someone in here, you have uh, panic attacks. Who is that? I would encourage you to sow. This is how you give somebody you have a panic attacks. Let me see who you are. Panic attacks. Mm. I know I shift very suddenly when I hear the word of the Lord, I just shift. Panic attacks. Mm. I'm waiting for you to tell me that's you. Transition doesn't just happen. Transition requires consistency, a plan, revelation, panic attacks. I pray for these individuals that are struggling with panic attacks. I speak over you now in the name of Jesus. And I speak a dismantling of, it's like, um, I see it like a castle. And what it is, it's a stronghold. The enemy started building this stronghold in you when you were young. Um, I see one of you, uh, people would do things like they would scare you. And that opened that door uh, for fear. I speak now a dismantling of this stronghold of fear and panic and anxiety, that which causes your heart to race, that which causes uh, such a, a shortness of, of breath. There are times that you feel like you're going to pass out because there is so much, it, you get overwhelmed with it. I break the power of that now in the name of Jesus. I release the shalom, the peace of God over you. And I hear this, 
uh, for one of you to take a look uh, in your house. There is something, uh, Shadana, this is for your sister. There are some things in, your, in her house that are the, the portal for the spirit of panic and the spirit of fear. She's got some things in her, in her house. She's got, she's got some, some of you call them knickknacks, you call them whatnots, whatever you call them. There's something in her house. I decree now that eyes are open to see and to hear. I command the spirit of panic, the spirit of anxiety. I take authority over you and I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. I command you to go in the name of Jesus, the spirit of, of panic, spirit of panic. Thank you for the peace of God, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that passes all understanding. This is a season. Hmm. Somebody, you, um, you keep losing money. You're misplacing money. You're misplacing money. You'll come back and you'll say, I don't know what happened to that. I know I had that $20. I don't know what happened to that. I don't, I don't know what happened. I, I had, I had hundred dollars. I don't know what happened to it. You keep losing. You're losing money. Who is that? You're losing money. You're losing money. Who is that? Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're losing money. Mm. Let me see who that is. You're losing money. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. You had it one minute, and then the next day you come back, and it's gone. Whatever the amount, whatever the amount, you're losing money. I use $20 as an example. You're losing money. You're losing money. Father, I thank you now for Lori. And I thank you that you are the God that adds to us and not takes from us. I cut off the spirit of loss that has tried to come into her finances. I cut off the spirit of loss that has tried to come into her finances. And I decree that you are expanding uh, her capacity. There is, uh, there's a, God is doing something in you and in uh, Deborah. There is something that God is doing that is building your capacity for your next financial season. For your next financial season, God is doing something in you. So we cut off the spirit of loss. We cut that off now and we command that where the enemy, I just see wicked fingers uh, in your, your wallet. I just see the, the fingers of, of, of the enemy pulling money out of your wallet. I, I cut that off right now. And I say to the thief, we caught you. We caught you. Now you must repay, not just sevenfold. We command a 100-fold return on what was stolen, what was taken from them. We cut off loss, and we say this is a season that you are expanding their capacity to be able to receive the harvest, the financial harvest that you have for them. I decree now. That their, expect, that their capacity is enlarging in the name of Jesus, spirit of loss. I cut you off, financial loss. I cut this off and I say no more. We caught you and we, we decree, we plead the blood of Jesus over their finances and I command a quick return. I command a quick return by the end of Passover, they will testify that money has started coming to them in unprecedented ways. I decree checks in the mail, 
lost money found, interest rebates, uh, money coming from unusual places for unusual reasons. I call that to you now in the name of Jesus. I speak to loss in families. I speak to loss in, in families. Uh, there's somebody uh, in the room, you've had a lot of loss. Now, now I'm talking about people that are no longer in the earth. In the last six months, several people in your family, several people connected to you have died. And you all haven't understood how did that happen? What's going on? You actually ask that question. What's going on? What is happening? Who is that? That's you. Father, we thank you for this tribe. Now, God, we speak a hedge of protection around them. We decree and we declare that this is a season and time that uh, we, we, act, we activate the gene of longevity. We activate the gene of longevity in this family. We speak this now where there have been people, one person after another person after another person has died in your family. I decree now that the gene of longevity has been activated in, this, in, this, in these families. Uh, you said with long life and good days, you would satisfy your people. Now, God, we call in that, pro that, that, that promise, long life and good days. We speak this now. I speak to those that have people in their family that have joined themselves. Uh, demonic, it's a, like a demonic covenant. Uh, it's like a demonic covenant that uh, they join themselves to gangs and to uh, some things in street life, and it has cost them time. Some of them left children behind. I speak and I cut that off and I say their children will not go the way of the father. The children will not go the way of the mother. That, that, that there is a new plumb line that's being set in these families. Father, we said thank you. I speak peace now. I command a spirit of loss, premature death and destruction. I command you to go and I activate the gene of longevity in these families in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is the season and, and this is the time that God says, I watch over my word to perform it. He said, if I said it, I will surely bring it to pass. This is that season. This is that time. I speak that over you. I pray for those that are sick those that are ill. I pray for you now and I command spirits of pain. Somebody, you're having pain in your body right now. You're having not just a little pain, you're having massive pain in your body right now. Who is that? I speak healing over your body now in the name of Jesus. I speak over those that have um, a fibromyalgia. I speak to that. Fibromyalgia. I command now spirits of pain. I speak to your nerves, the nerves in your body, and I come where they just are inflamed and creating pain in your body. I command pain to leave your body. I, I set you free now by the power of the living God. I plead the blood of Jesus over your body, and I decree that you are being healed right now. You're being restored right now. We speak to that kidney stone and we command it to pass out in the name of Jesus. We say even in the next 24 to 48 hours, that kidney stone will pass through his body. We speak this now, fibromyalgia. I command healing in your body. Healing in your body. We command it to go now. We command it to go. All forms of pain, wherever this pain is, I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Somebody, you have pain right in the back of the base of your, um, your skull, right in the back of your head, you're having pain. It's more, um, it's more the back of your skull than it is the top of your spine. Uh, somebody, that's, that's the pain that you're having. Who is that? Father, we thank you for healing. 
We thank you for restoration. I, we speak now. I release a, the, the, a supernatural uh, anointing for healing uh, through these airways. I command bodies to be healed and to be restored in the name of Jesus. I speak to that pain in the back of your head. And I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands right where you are, uh, Dolores. Lift up your hands and begin to give God praise. If you pray in tongues, I want you to pray in tongues. And I command that pain to shift now in the name of Jesus. Mm. Father, we thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. Thank you uh, for what you're doing. It's a season and it's a time of complete healing and complete restoration. Uh, somebody, your your uh, something is going on with your hearing. Over the past two to three months, you've noticed uh, something going on in your your hearing. You're suffering a measure of uh, uh, hearing loss. Hearing loss. This wasn't a problem a year ago. You just started noticing. Uh, a measure of hearing loss. Who is that? I command healing from all forms of pain. If you have oil, anoint yourself, lift up your hands, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost till you feel that thing shifted. The anointing has gone out. The anointing has, has, has met you. Now you must respond to the healing anointing. Mm. Father, we say thank you. I speak now. Oh God, I speak now full recovery, healing in the ears. I speak to I speak to your your ear your your hearing system. I speak to that now in the name of Jesus, and I command full return of your hearing. I speak that you will not need a hearing aid. You do not need a miracle ear. I decree now by the power of the living God. I send the breath of heaven to you and I command your hearing loss, that hearing loss to be restored, fully restored in the name of Jesus. Full restoration, full restoration. I speak that over you now. I command your hearing to be restored. There's somebody you are being, um, you're being evaluated for um, mm, dementia, you're being evaluated for dementia, Alzheimer's, memory loss. Who is that? You're being evaluated for memory loss. Who is that? Father, we thank you because you are the healer. You are the healer. You are the restorer. Father, we say thank you. Mm. You are. Mm. We speak over Raymond. We speak to his mind, every blood vessel, every nerve, every aspect of of his body, of his brain. We speak to his brain. We speak now to every aspect of his brain and we command healing. Even this generational assignment that has been on this bloodline, we say, God, you are turning it now in the name of Jesus. You are turning this and you are establishing a new plumb line beginning with him. Mm. You're establishing a new plumb line beginning with him. We speak healing over Raymond, anoint his head, anoint his head, keep declaring it, keep speaking it, and keep declaring it, and keep speaking it. It is the will of the Lord that he be healed. It is the will of the Lord that he be healed. Father, we say thank you. All of you, why don't you just right where you are, just lift up your hands and give God praise. Come on, give him a hallelujah. Come on, say it out loud. Give him a hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of the Lord right where you are. Bless the name of the Lord right where you are. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless, come on, let's just bless his name. Come on, just bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Hmm. Bless his name. 
Father, we thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people. We thank you for what you're doing in Jamaica. I just heard Jamaica. Father, we speak now. Let the winds of the of heaven surround that island. We pray for Jamaica. We decree that the fires of revival, even as those seeds, various ministries going in and coming out and going in and coming out. We speak now revival over Jamaica. And we decree that this is a season and time that every assignment of the occult and every assignment of witchcraft and every assignment of the demonic is being broken now and the ecclesia on that island are arising and that there's a new visibility even in government that's coming to the ecclesia. I thank you for those that are being elected to governmental offices that are part of, they are kingdom. They are not religious, they are kingdom. Father, we thank you for those kingdom citizens that you are establishing new faces in government. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in Jamaica. We thank you for the song that is the song uh, that rises out of Jamaica. And we say now this is the season that they will again sing the song of restoration. They will again sing the songs that honor the living God. We speak that now. And we say even as uh, uh, I, I just hear this and I see like uh, funnel clouds. We turn back uh, storms that, that will head toward Jamaica and it will be reported that the storm formed and as quickly as it formed, it dissipated. Father, we speak that now in the name of Jesus. We speak the turning of storms, economic storms over, over Jamaica and physical storms over Jamaica, hurricanes. We turn them back now by the word of the Lord we turn them back by the word of the Lord and we decree that they will report it in the media. Thank you for what you're doing. We pray for Jamaica. We pray for Jamaica. Even that hope deferred that has captured that island for so many years, we break the power of hope deferred that has been there. The spirit of religion that came and took a seat and evicted the spirit of prophecy and revelation and, and, and the apostolic. We decree now that there's a, a the door of access is open in Jamaica and there's a mighty shift that's coming to that island in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you are doing. Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you uh, for your mercy. Thank you for what you're doing uh, in Jamaica. Father, we pray for nations that are at war. We pray for Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we say that Israel will not be evicted from our own land. We decree that there's a, a, a righteousness coming. We decree righteousness now, righteousness and justice. Father, we thank you for what you're doing for Israel in the name of Jesus. We pray for Ukraine. And Father, we say, you said that they would prevail. Father, we say, let, let them continue. Let there be a new wind that is released in Ukraine. Let there be a new wind of victory that is at their back that surrounds them and let them press through. And let it be said that Ukraine triumphed over her enemies. And even those that have been the aggressors in nations and they have felt the need to attack other nations for their resources and plunder other nations. Father, we say, let the fear of the Lord begin to arise in China and in Russia, Iran, Iraq. Let the, let the, let the, let the fear of the Lord begin to arise in a new way. And Father, we say, even where there's been that, that, that false altar, that false paradigm, false worship paradigm, we say, now let Dagon fall on his face before the living God. Let Dagon fall on his face before the living God. We decree it now in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We bless you. Father, we thank you for those that are in transition. I hear the word restart. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to show you how to restart. I see God give, God gave you a plan, but somehow in the midst of that, so much of the old plan came into it. I see, I just see it being torn up. The plan you made, I see it being torn up. And I hear the Lord saying, I did, you, uh, the enemy didn't tear it up. He said, I tore it up. He said, and I'm going to write the vision for you again. I'm going to let you see the apostolic blueprint again. He said, and you will, you will begin to move with me. He said, not me moving with you. He said, I'll show you how to move with me. Uh, Keandre, I hear the Lord saying, this is a season of a fresh start for you. The Lord says, I've not changed my mind about you. I've not changed my mind about who I purpose you to be. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to cause a company 
of women to surround you, those that, that are pure, those that have my word in their heart, those that have been established in my word. And I just see them bearing you up in this next season of your life. I see God doing a very quick work in you. And the Lord says that, yes, there is a marketplace call that is upon your life. And the Lord says, it is my desire to make you a showpiece in the marketplace. He said, you will be a model of what it means to be in the marketplace, to have integrity, purity, and honor. When the Lord says, I will even in due time cause there to be, I see like, um, awards coming from government because they're going to take notice of you. I see this happening over the next five-year period. Uh, uh, government is going to begin to take notice of you, and there are certain awards that are going to come to you. And the Lord says, yes, I'm preparing you. He said, and I am doing a quick work in you. He said, what seems to be hard for you uh, to lay aside, he said, it is not hard for uh, for me to deliver you from. He said, this is the season that I call you overcomer. He said, this is the season that you will know that I am Ebenezer. I am the one that helps you. He said, and I am helping you to overcome every assignment of the enemy that would try to take you back into your yesterday. He said, I'm bringing you fully into your future. He said, in the future I have planned for you, it's good. He said, the future I have planned for you, it's good. I, I see children around you. I don't know if you have children. I see children around you. I see a son. You have a son? I see a son. It's something with your children. And the Lord said, there's a call of ministry that is upon your children. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to show you how to parent them, even in those times that it seems difficult and it seems like they're not listening. The Lord says, I'm going to put right words in your mouth. He said, you will begin to prophesy over your son. He said, but my hand is upon him. My hand is upon him in a, in a powerful way. And I just see him. I see him 20 years from now. I see him in his 30s. I don't know how old your children are. I see him in his 30s. 30s leading uh, ministry. The Lord said, my call is upon his life. He said, and I will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. He said, I purposed him. He said, I purposed him. I purposed him for his generation. Father, I thank you for, for Keandre and I thank you for her children. I thank you for the great work that you will do in the lives of her children. Thank you for that dreamer's anointing that is upon um <laughs> he'll be 30 in 20 years. God's going to do a mighty work. You will see him emerging in ministry before that, but you will see him as fully established. You're going to see him fully established and God is going to show you how to parent him. You're going to parent him and disciple him right into his future. As he moves into that place of, of, of leading as a senior leader, he will absolutely serve in his teen years. He will serve as a youth minister. The Lord said that platform of youth ministry will be where I will launch him fully into uh, that place of being a senior leader. And the Lord says, I'm going to show you how to protect him from the wolves that will come that will say, can I take him with me here? Can I take him with you there? With, with me there. And the Lord says, and you will say, no, you will not, you will not give your son as a sacrifice for those that will plunder him. And the Lord said, do not be afraid to say no. Do not be afraid to say no. I see this for him very strongly as he begins to emerge as a gift. There are notable men that are going to come and say, I'd like for him to travel with me. And I hear the Lord saying, your answer is to be no. It is to be no. Father, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for just thank you for restoration in our families. Thank you because our, our children have such great calls of ministry and destiny upon them. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. You've not changed your mind about us. You've not changed your mind. You've not changed your mind. Father, I thank you. Father, I pray for Laverna and that new endeavor. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. And I decree the winds of success blowing upon it now in such a massive way. It won't be it what, what it took others five years, 10 years, 20 years to accomplish. She will accomplish it in three years. There, I just see a short road. I see God putting you, he's put you on a short road and you're going to run hard. And the Lord says, you're going to look around three years from now and say, my God, I would never have thought that I would accomplish all of this in a three-year period. The Lord says, I'm doing it 
and by the power of my spirit, he said, I purpose you too for a generation. He said, I've given you a voice. He said, and you will herald the word of the Lord. He said, you will herald my word. And he said, and many will be turned from darkness to light because you are courageous and you were bold and you said what I said. Father, thank you for Laverta. Thank you for those that are in this room tonight. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. Father, thank you that that you give us, you you give us, I, I just feel the winds of refreshing. And I want you to just lift up your hands wherever you are right now. I feel the winds of refreshing. God is refreshing his people. You've been heavy, you've been tired, you've been frustrated. Some of you, you've been overwhelmed. The Lord said, I am releasing the winds of refreshing now. I want you to just breathe in real deep and receive that word for your life. Breathe in and then exhale. Mm. This is the season. This is the time for the refreshing winds of the Lord. The Lord said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to look back at what you picked up in the last season. He said, he said, you're tired and you feel burned out. He said, because you picked up some assignments because you thought they were good. He said, but I did not call you to it. He said, that's why it's been heavy. That's why it's been difficult. And that's why it's been hard. The Lord says, but I'm going to give you grace to lay it down. He said, I'm going to give you grace to lay it down. Father, I release the winds of refreshing upon your people. Thank you for what you're doing. Father, I bless them, every one of them. In Jesus' name. Listen, will you sow a seed? Uh, transition has a price tag. Uh, it has a big price tag. And uh, it, it didn't happen overnight. And it took a lot uh, for us to get here. Your seed will help us to be fully secured uh, in this new place. This is a time that if you can sow a seed of $50, if you can sow $100, certainly if you can sow more than $100, I need significant seed so that we are secured in this new place that God has called us into. Will you help us to do that? Those of you that have already partnered with me, you partner with me in amazing ways. Thank you so much. Your seed comes right in time. Your seed comes right in time. So Father, I thank you for those that are in this room. Listen, we're getting ready to, to do, uh, we're gonna do something between, I think we're starting on April, uh, I wanna say 20th or the 21st. Let me look at a calendar. Uh, we'll be posting uh, the announcement and I want you to get in with me. Uh, if you subscribe to um, my page, if you subscribe to uh, VJ Austin Ministries uh, or no, you have to text. Claudia, put the uh, text uh, up so they know how uh, to sign up so they get the alerts. They know what I'm doing. They're the first to know when a new course is coming out. Listen, in order for you to know that, you have to turn on uh, and, and, and agree to receive text from us and email. You have to agree. If you don't, then you just have to get the information of when you get it. Um, now, if you're outside of the United States, some places, uh, if you're in Africa, unfortunately, we can't text you. We can only email you. For those of you that have turned off uh, uh, your subscription, I hope that you will turn it back on. Uh, we have a little bit of difficulty when you unscribe. We have a little bit of difficulty getting you back in because the system, the algorithm perceives that we are spamming you. I don't send out enough anything for it to be considered spam. And so I want you to text uh, your information, sign me up. Uh, yes, yes, I want information. Let us know that you do. And um, we can, and the people that do that uh, in my ministry on my team, they will see that and they will get you in. So beginning on the 20th, let me just get this really get it on the 20th of april we're going to start uh we're going to be on every it's the 21st of april leading all the way up to pentecost we i will be on every sunday night i will be on every sunday night we'll be talking about it uh it'll be a time now is the time for you to begin to ask the Lord how you should fast. I'll be fasting uh, during that time. Ask the Lord to show you um, how to fast. I think Pentecost is May 19th. I think that's uh, somebody check for me real quick. 
Uh, yes, you can do uh, Zelle. I'm not sure how to tell you how to do Zelle, but yes, you can absolutely uh, do Zelle. <laughs> You can do Zell, VJ Austin International Ministries. Uh, you can absolutely do uh, Zell. Your seat will help to uh, secure us. Yes, I'm speaking at Passover. Yes, I am speaking at Passover. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm excited about the word of the Lord. I'm excited about the word of the Lord. I look forward to seeing many of you at Passover come up and say, hello, uh, boss wants, uh, wants to thank you uh, for praying for him as he passed over. Uh, he's, hearing, he's hearing somebody or something outside. He, his first flight was very good. He didn't do any of that. He didn't do any of that barking. Uh, he just took it all in stride. He was sitting in the first class cabin uh, with me and his little carrier. He never said a word. He just, you know, laid back and enjoyed the ride. <laughs> he laid back and enjoyed the ride and uh, he has seemingly enjoyed uh, being here. So boss is now uh, a Texas dog. <laughs> He is now a Texas dog, so I'm grateful. Listen, we're getting ready for Innovate. There's so many things I want to tell you. I won't take the time to tell you now because I'm past my time. But uh, Innovate Summit is coming in November. We'll do a formal a formal save the date, but you're going to want to save the date. Uh, November 15th and 16th is, is going to be Innovate Summit. No? What's the date? Put it up. <laughs> oh, God. What's the date? Put the dates up. November 18th and 8th and 9th. Oh, thank you. Why did I think it was November 15th and 16th? I don't know. Well, I'll get my, I'll get my business straight and we'll post the real... <laughs> See, this is why I need good administrators. I could see her shaking her head. No. <laughs> November 8th and 9th. I'm grateful uh, for what the Lord is doing. And uh, so I want you to save the date. It's going to be in November. We wanted to get on the other side of the election. And uh, it's going to be an incredible gathering right here in Texas. Right here in Texas. Yeah, boss is preaching. Uh, he, uh, boss was on his watch. Boss heard something that was unfamiliar and he sat right on up. He sat right on up. So if you see me at Passover at Gloria Zion, come on up and say hello. Let me know that you follow me on social media. Let's take some pictures. Let's do all that good stuff. And um, if I'm in a region near you with the Encounters Tour, uh, will you uh, plan to attend? It's gonna be incredible. We need your anointing to help shift regions. Will you do that? Thank you for the seed that you've sown tonight. Thank you for your giving. Thank you so much. It, your seed will help to secure us uh, in uh, this new uh, territory. Lots is changing and um, just a lot of things are changing. I'll talk to you more about that next time. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you soon. Good night, everybody.